Project C East Africa, how are you doing? My name is Wavenya. I'm hoping that you're well and you know that um, you, you, you've been kept and you've been protected by the Almighty Father. East Africa, hmm, Africa, Kenya. We've been a target for the longest time, haven't we? And right now with the Malindi court case, everything in their language context is, is changing to support decriminalization of abortion. Article 26 is very clear. Life begins at conception. And so obviously because it does begin in conception, it has to be protected, right? But the clause leaves out so many strings um, you know, um, unattended to, and that is exactly what they've taken advantage of. And now the Malindi court ruling has gotten a lot of people excited. Of course, the people, the evil people, and they think that they can now get away with it. They've been doing it. They've been doing it over time. And the call is upon you and me right now, because if we do not do something, they will continue pushing and they will continue um, entrenching these wicked, wicked laws and policies. I don't think I need to be the person to tell you the curses that we are looking at attracting if we do not do anything, if we do not speak out against this madness. If we do not do that, the judgment will also be upon us. And sometimes I know we all feel weak, especially pro-lifers, uh, because we're not, we feel like we're not able to do so much beyond perhaps talking or uh, raising the awareness. See, Satan is so busy planting the tares while we sleep. And I'm talking about spiritual sleep. I'm talking about sleep in respect to action. Because if we do not choose to act out now, Kenya, imagine America, Texas, different states in the U.S. are working on banning abortions. And here we are with our parliamentarians who are supposed to be our eyes at the front. Here they are being paid a hefty amount of cash to push for the decriminalization of abortion. And we're still voting them in. We have like a few days to the elections. I want to put a spotlight on a few people that you need to be very careful about. Starting with Raila of Dinga. What does he stand for? What does he stand for when it comes to matters life? He made a very careless statement in 2010 saying what is there to save in something that has no hands, has no legs. And he was talking about up to three months. Does Raila know the science? Does he know science? Does he know God? Let's move on quickly to Madame Esther Passaris, <laughs> Nairobi's former women's representative. What is her stance? She's not hiding it. She's not been hiding it. But here she is again. We've been, we're in another election year. And people may as well be fooled by her charm and vote for her. She's a witch. She is wicked. She is twisted. Her stance is clear. She feels that abortion is a woman's right. Does she think about the right of that individual, that separate autonomy in the womb of the mother? No, and she doesn't care. So, you and I have a responsibility to ensure that the policymakers we place right there are people who represent the values that we have. Kenya has a population of majority Christians, over 70%. If we would come together with an understanding that life is valuable, and that life is worthy from conception, from the womb to the tomb. If we came collectively as believers, and I pray that Muslims join us too, then I tell you, we have the ability to take, change the tide. So go back and check why it is that you're voting for these people again. Because it is only then, if we have the right people 
we will be able to push for policy changes. We will be able to call for the kicking out of marriage stops and all these other dimwits, all these other wicked schemers, all these other uh, abortionists. We'll be able to do that. But if you just sit down and say, you know what? I'm voting for my tribe. I'm voting for the person that I think makes me laugh. Say, five years. <laughs> We've already seen it with the Uhuru regime. They have no value for life. They have no value for life. And that is why all these things have been happening. If it were Kibaki in power, I kid you not, that Malindi case would not have seen the light of day. They would have called it out. And they would have just put it in plain black and white. May God rest Lucy Kibaki's soul in peace and Mwai Kibaki's soul in peace. That would not have happened in their regime. It wouldn't have happened in the Moy regime. But oh, you got this modern and most people say young president. What has he brought? Filthy rags. It's crazy. The wickedness is almost tripled here in Kenya. Abortion. Gayism. Now they have a right to assemble. They can do whatever they want to do. While you and I are seated where we are. I have something for the church too. And maybe I'll do that in the next video. We need a call out to the church. You have been sleeping. And the sickle is ready to do the harvest. What side will you be on? Signing out for Project C Kenya, praying for Kenya and calling for repentance. We have to change the tide, you and I.